Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Amy, from Vagabond Youth. The reason why I haven't made a video in a really long time is because the month of July I basically spent in bed or on antibiotics or both so the first or second week of July I actually got my wisdom teeth pulled out and they were finally my last two or last two and I was on antibiotics and bed rest for about a week but that was totally fine um, it was it went really well um, and then shortly after that a week after I got one of the worst sicknesses that I've ever gotten and it's not even that bad I got strep throat um, for the first time in my life and I was on five different antibiotics a day um, I literally my tonsils were so swollen that it was choking me and my doctor was worried that I couldn't swallow so I lost about seven pounds in less than five days because I wasn't eating a lot and it was really really intense so um, I'm a, still a little sick so I'm recovering from that I just have a really weak immune system so the month of July has been a lot of illnesses also I have no C disk space on my laptop so I have a ton of footage that needs to be edited but my Final Cut Pro X won't work because there's no disk space and I've backed it all up onto a hard drive but I don't know if I'm allowed to delete everything now or like if I'm gonna be able to access it really easily so if you guys know anything about that leave a comment down below and let me know because I'm so so lost so that being said let's go on into my favorites this first aid beauty face cleanser and ultra repair cream have been amazing for me because um, this is extremely moisturizing and it is a cream it's very heavy and this is just a really smooth nice face cleaner uh, I wouldn't really recommend this if you have a lot of acne because it doesn't really exfoliate but um, I don't have any acne so this is it just gets the job done and it's really soft on my face which I enjoy so a while back Marc Jacobs did a collection or Neiman Marcus and Marc Jacobs did a collection for Target and it was only sold at Target and they did these foil pouches I have one right now but I can't find it and uh, wayward pouches is a company that does very similar foil pouches to it and I really like this one this is like the rolls gold edition one and what I like to do is basically just keep all of my pads in here because I don't know I guess it's obscene to be walking around with pads in your hand when you go to the bathroom but I basically just keep this in my purse for on the go and it's just perfect it's a perfect size for keeping pads in your purse and I just think it's really stylish and really pretty and really handy Mm, I said the word really like a million times. So if you've been following me on Instagram and have been looking at my OOTDs, you definitely know that I've basically been wearing halter tops or any kind of form of them all throughout the summer and so that is my July favorite. This one is not necessarily a halter top, it's kind of a little bit more blocking. This one's from Nasty Gal. I bought this a couple months ago, um, but it's amazing quality. I've literally put it in the wash so many times and it never loses its color or form. A lot of you always comment on my Instagram pictures asking what type of bra I wear with halter tops, and basically I just wear a strapless bra. I don't know what kind of other bra you would wear, um, but I got this bra uh, recently at Free People, and it's just a halter lace bra. It is so comfy, but I do know that if you're a little bit um, more in doubt, it really hurts or strains your neck and luckily enough for me I'm basically uh, really flat chested so um, it's really comfy for me but I've heard a lot of issues um, with girls who have bigger boobs basically so I would definitely check this out if you uh, don't get a lot going on here because it's really comfy and adds a little bit of pizzazz to your halter top. So some of you may know I go to school at UCLA and that's more on the west side of Los Angeles but I actually spend a lot of my time in downtown and one of my favorite bookstores in downtown is called The Last Bookstore. My favorite thing about it is that it's basically a hybrid between kind of like a record store slash art museum slash bookstore and what I like to do if I have a little free time in downtown by myself I usually like to go to the second floor and if you didn't know the entire second floor has books in the back that are all one dollar they're all used books I think you can find yeah they're all used books I'm pretty sure they're all used books but I like to find like little random books that I would never find really anywhere else and I picked up two this month um, this one is garden photography um, by the Brooklyn Botanic Garden record and this was printed in the 1990s and I just like it because I think it's fun to read and go through what 
garden photography was like in the 1990s. Like for example right here it says include people in garden photos. The subject inspects a cold frame. Like to me that is both very artistic and hilarious at the same time. A lot of the tips in here are obsolete now because technology has gotten so advanced, but it's just fun to look at and it's definitely a conversation starter if you like to keep this on your coffee table. I also really like architecture. I picked up this Pictorial Guide to Cathedral Architecture by Martin S. Briggs and it's basically a catalog of just all these cathedrals and a little bit side information about the cathedrals and um, there's a glossary of architectural terms. So if you're ever in downtown, I definitely would recommend heading out to the last bookstore. I'll have an address linked down so below. In my last favorites video, I talked about an art exhibition I really loved. And this month, I actually went to a couple of exhibitions, but there's two that I wanted to tell you guys about. One of them's not open anymore because I went to the last weekend that it was showing and it was Mike Kelly at the Geffen Contemporary at MoCA. Mike Kelly is an American contemporary artist who worked with a lot of mediums and this exhibition was one of the biggest exhibitions, I think it was the biggest exhibition uh, to date of all his works. It was 250 artworks and it was amazing. It was actually a little bit overwhelming because the entire you know museum was full of his art and I only had about like two hours, not even that much to spend there. I actually saw a lot of his work at um, just the regular mocha in downtown. This one is in Little Tokyo or near, yeah, this one was in Little Tokyo and I saw his work there and I really uh, thought it was thought provoking and so I was really excited to see it. There was um, a lot of video installations and a lot of sculptures. My favorite piece at the exhibition was called Silver Ball and it's literally just an installation with a aluminum foil, chicken wire, artificial fruit, and um, there are some lights in between so you could kind of like go close and see the inside of the silver ball which was like full of you know like artificial fruit and like different knickknacks and objects which I thought was really interesting and it just looked really cool. So I picked up this postcard for a dollar at the bookstore. One that you can see is Made in LA uh, 2014 and this is a biennial show that the Hammer Museum, the UCLA Hammer Museum does every year and it's on show till September 7th so if you guys can go out to see it I would. It showcases 35 artists making art in LA. I don't know if I said this but a mission is totally free and it was a lot of fun. My favorite was Samara Golden's doll installation. If you guys saw my 4th of July vlog uh, we kind of messed around with it so go check that out. I'll have a link down below. But uh, Made in LA was a really great exhibition and it showed a lot of contemporary art from artists in LA. My music favorite of the month was an album called Sleep in the Water by Snackadactyl and they're basically a band from Melbourne and I would describe it as kind of like chill wave, uh, minimalist, indie, electronic, I don't really know. I would listen to it a lot on the drives late at night from UCLA to back to my parents house and the song Fall Underneath I literally listened to on repeat with my windows down and just cruising down on the 105. It was just good music. I really liked it. So that's pretty much it for my favorites. If you guys ever need to reach me or have any comments or requests feel free to reach me on Twitter or Instagram at Amy Vagabond with two D's and if you have any requests leave them in the comments down below because I know it's back to school season and I would love to make some videos for you guys and I hopefully will see you soon. Alright, bye. That was really awkward. Alright, I'll see you guys later.